Welcome back to my heart, which is what every British person needs to know about the American experience. So now I'm going to talk about sauces, and I touched on it briefly in the dressings video, but I'd like to clarify something. So I talked about horseradish sauce being something that they might put on a prawn, or as they call it here, a shrimp. And actually, I just need to go a little further with that because, and let me go into my trusty giant fridge, let me pull out the required pieces. This is actually cocktail sauce. Now you can see it doesn't look like what you and I would expect for cocktail sauce, which would be these. So what goes into that is in fact horseradish plus ketchup plus some other stuff equals cocktail sauce. So if you ask for cocktail sauce or somebody offers you cocktail sauce, you're really getting these in this kind of form and definitely not these. So. That's all cleared up. Let's talk about other stuff that I have. One moment, please. Go up to the trusty fridge. I want to talk about mustard. I want to talk about, and there's one over here too, these fine things here. What every British person needs to know about mustard is this, very importantly. This is what the Americans consider to be mustard. It's like your yellow mustard. It's kind of vinegar based and pretty bland. It's tasty, it's nice, like, but it's pretty bland. There's no kick to this. And this is what you would put on a hot dog along with this. And let's see what other things do I have here that I might put on a hot dog. Oh, some relish, everybody's got that because these are your basic foundational pieces that you put on a hot dog, which Americans really do eat a lot of. Actually, it's kind of shocking, but it can be quite tasty too. <laughs> so you'll say, well, where's the good old English mustard, Andy? Well, I have some because on the occasions when I have a steak, I, it's not the same without this guy. But the Americans do not understand that mustard and steak go together like a hand in a glove or peanut butter and jelly, which is a whole different thing. We'll get to another day. So if you go out and eat, or if you go to somebody's house and eat, and you ask for mustard to go with your steak, you're going to get the... And they won't have this. They might have this. If you're in a fine dining place, they might have this. Um, I don't think like your regular eatery place will have this. And I know that because I've asked and I've had the... Look, so just beware. If you do go to one of those places and you ask for mustard, this is what you'll get. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll get this, but unexpectedly. So just so you know, I do like a grainy mustard. So I will say that I have both of these in my house. I would not say that they are typical, um, but they do exist in my house. So what do they put on a steak in the US? So if you ask for a sauce to go with your steak, they're gonna give you um, something called A1 steak sauce. So I know it's very American, right? A1. So, um, but it's quite nice. I mean, it's probably a little sweet and it, I don't think it's like HP. So I'm gonna leave it to Joe to explain what HP is. It's a great British tradition. Not something I've heard in my house either, but um, I think that explains that. So, okay, so what else do I have in my fridge that um, I think is part of my American experience that my British friends would not have in their fridge? Let's go with this. One out, not in the fridge, and I've got one, two in the fridge. Let's see if I can show this up to you. It is barbecue sauce. I think most Americans would have at least one of these. I have three, although, you know, like these two are really low, so I probably bought one more to replace it. Also, chance, I only really will buy anything like this, or actually even the dressings that I had, a, that I had in a different show. Um, buy one, get one. I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna pay full price for this stuff, are you kidding me? It's not, it's not in my budget, so um, I will usually buy this kind of stuff on a buy one, get one, and that's why I tend to have, uh, but you know, you can get different flavors or whatever, so that's fine. Barbecue sauce, so I've got, let's see, sweet honey, spicy honey, and I've got original. And uh, there's a whole aisle, like maybe it's not a whole aisle, a whole section of barbecue sauces in all different sizes, like really spicy to really sweet. And um, barbecue is really a Southern thing. So Southern would mean not New York, and you'd keep going down, maybe where you hit Virginia and you keep going down. Texas, huge barbecue place. Brisket's a whole other thing. We'll talk about brisket and meats that you wouldn't recognize the name of in the US. 
are very common, not something that you would recognize a cut of that. We'll talk about that another day, but just suffice to know that these things are delicious because again, they have a lot of sugar in them, but you can make your own and your own usually starts with a base of this, which of course also has a bunch of sugar in it too. But the whole point is that most of them do have a sweet base and that gives them that, but it cooks a little bit out, I suppose, I hope. Anyway, so I think, let me do one last forage in the fridge, see if there's anything else that might be interesting in terms of sauces. Let's see. So, I don't think, oh, I have a pesto, but I think everybody really doesn't have a pesto. I have some hummus, but I think that's very common too. I do have this, maybe I can explain this. This is a homemade apple butter, which means I put a ton of apples into my crock pot, watch another show for a crock pot, and just have them stewed basically almost overnight, like a good eight, 10 hours. And anything that you basically break down like that for a long period of time, they call it butter. Um, it doesn't really look like butter, but you're supposed to put it on toast and it's usually, again, sweet. Um, but I made some of my own. It's not bad. I gave it to friends as a gift. Like you can, you know, it's a, this is a mason jar, very American. Like a lot of people do that canning thing. So I just put a bow in it and we were going to somebody's house for some things. So I took that along with some other stuff. So butters are a big thing in the US too. So if you see something that says butter, don't expect that it's just like an actual butter with something in it. But in fact, while we're talking about butter, I will show you the butter. Because you might be interested in that. I'll just put the fridge on there. So, this is my butter. See the size of that? It's not an Anchor dairy butter. We do have Anchor butter actually over here. And the, uh, there's Irish butter over here too, a lot more expensive than your regular American butter, obviously, because there's a lot of dairies and, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, so butter comes in sticks like this, and they are, they come in a packet like, no, I don't know if I have a packet there. Here we go. I'll show you my butters. They're actually four ounce sticks like this. And so they come in a package like this and you just use one stick at a time. So in the US, you'll see a lot of recipes that say one stick of butter. Ha ha, that should explain that to you now. Um, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>